And if you think I'm here to play around with y'all, God damn it, I'm not. All right, Mr. O'Neill, please stop using um, swearing language. How you doing, Ron? Good. It's good to see you, man. Good to see you, too. Did you see me shoot your mom? No. Did I hurt you that night of this incident? Yes. I did. And how did I hurt you? You stabbed me. When we, I may take an early lunch. And if that's in your cell, then you can go get it and bring it. But without that letter, I'm not allowing this line of questioning. Do you have the letter with so, you in court? I just said no. How okay. many times I got to say the same thing on, on, on record? You know, sometimes, sir, I don't hear what you say because you interrupt me so much or you answer quietly. And, and I'm taking notes and I'm focused on probably a dozen things at the same time. But if I but if I say something under my breath, everybody seems to hear it. Everybody seems to hear in that just fine. In a quiet courtroom, yes, we assumes, can hear it very and clearly. Everybody assumes that it has to be disparaging. Or, Once again, you're doing this tactic because you tried it to it's not a tactic. Off of it's facts. What we're talking it's facts. About to some other reason, it's facts. Because I, I find thing. it hard to believe that. Um, I'm going to let the state. Sudden, nobody hears what I say. I'm going to let the state oh, man, make stop. a record of why they stop. believe it's objectionable because I haven't let them do that. I've given you multiple opportunities to tell me why you so believe I, it's... I didn't get these pictures from they, nobody else. Why was somebody else... The record else, will reflect you have two pictures that you believe were from this witness. That I know is from them. No, that you believe. That I know. All right. I'll ask the state their position on all of this. My position, Your Honor, is that these pictures, first of all, should not be admissible. One, because of a discovery violation. We've never seen them before. Two, because we have reason to believe that he did not get them from Erica Patterson. He is on a jail phone call talking to his mother, Dawn Woods, uh, about Dawn Woods sending these photographs to him. Now, that's a lie. I object Let to that. the state make their argument without interruption, sir. That's a lie, though. Three, I believe that these photographs are designed to make a suggestion to the jury that Erica Patterson is a bad mom. I think that that's what the defendant is trying to do. And if we're going to go down that road, then we would be forced to counter that claim. First of all, it doesn't make her an incredible witness, if it's even true. And second of all, if we go down that road, we would be forced to counter that claim by pointing out that not only does the defendant not live with the child in question, he doesn't live with any of the other children that he has. He impregnated Erica Patterson when she was a minor in Nevada. And for doing so, he was convicted of statutory sexual seduction pled guilty in March of 2007 to that felony offense and is a sex offender on the registry as a result. So if there's any causation that would lead to Erica Patterson being a bad mom, Mr. Brooks has a direct role in that causation. And that's further more, to that I'm not because sure. Because that's a lie. Let him at finish. The end of the day, let if him we, finish. If we don't open the Mr. door on that. No, since he want to make a record and not be accurate, so let's be ac accurate all on the record since you think you know so much. Once so again, we can Mr. open Brooks the door on. We can loud, open the door on how old she told me she was. Interrupting. We, we can ask that question he is too. Then over the top. Did you ask that? Do you right know now. that, Mr. Brooks? I'm ordering you to sit down and to let the state no, finish. No, I'm not going to sit here and let somebody be inaccurate on the record and lie on the record. Right. Under Illinois versus Allen, I've warned him repeatedly. He's being removed from the courtroom. Um, and you know what? Let me dial that back. We're just going to take an early lunch. One hour. We'll be back. And uh, unless he brings that letter Dog and he can show it is inadmissible, you know she will on. not be questioned. And under 906.11, I yeah, will declare the cross-examination closed. You where, you what Thank you. We're in recess. One hour. Happened, bro. Get your facts straight. So let's, let's open the door on all of it then so we can get all of it on the record. Since you think you know so much. Did, did you know she said she was 18 when I'm... What did you do to Stoney Blair that makes you guilty of premeditated murder? She raped my son. I intentionally killed her. How did you do that? Um, starting from the beginning, when I found out about what Stoney was doing to Matthew, it was nine months later after finding out about Stephen. So for the whole nine months we were in the house, she was still raping my child. I did not know that. When I first found out, after Maddie told me, um, I took a minute because I was not understanding, you know, what was, 
that she did that to him, but um, I repeatedly punched her. On many occasions, my son, I told him to tell me every single thing she did to him. So as she was telling me, he was telling me more and more things that she did. I assaulted her every time he told me what she did to him. Um, by assault, I mean I punched her. I have put a bag over her head till she lost consciousness. Um, I threw hot water on her, scalding hot water from the faucet. Um, Did you hit her in the head with a wooden yes, stick? Yes, I hit her in her head multiple times, over and over. Was that shortly before she died? That was actually days before she died and the day she died. Okay. Um, I hit her on her back. It's like on her tailbone. Um, I kicked her. Okay, I just want to clarify a few things. And perhaps you don't know, but did this happen on or about May 25th, 2014? May, May 25th is actually the day she died. Well, the day I killed her. And you said you killed her by putting a grocery bag over her head? Yes. Um, that day, Maddie would tell me different things because she was doing this to him for years, and I did not know that. You get what I'm saying? And I didn't find out until nine months later. She had started with Stephen. She ruined my son, okay? She started with Stephen before he even started. So, yes, I put a bag over her head, but... um. It got worse that day. Yes, I did. It got worse that day because Matthew would tell me how she would take her pad, her menstrual pad, and squeeze her blood out in his mouth. Okay? And it was just, it was over with after that. It was over with. You meant to kill her? I definitely meant to kill her. Okay. It wasn't an accident? No, not at all. Okay. If I had a chance to do it again, I would. When you went and got the grocery bag, and suffocated her. That was your intent? Yes. Um, she was standing in the bathtub. I was throwing hot water on her. My son was standing to my right outside the bathroom door and he was telling me everything he was telling me. I looked at her and I'm like, you did this? And she was like, yes. So I actually had a stick and I was hitting her in the head. Every time he told me something, I hit her very hard in her head and I was throwing hot water on her. And when I actually took her out of the bathroom, I took her back in her room, and I just kept staring at her, and I said, excuse my language, but I'm like, why the fuck would you do this to him? Just like, you know, I'm constantly asking her, and she kept saying, I hate him. And I'm like, you hate him? You know? And she admitted to me that she hated Gabrielle, she hated Steven, she hated everybody. And I'm asking her why. She says, because everybody always think Matthew's so cute, and I'm like, so you fuck your brother because you get what I'm saying. So it's, I meant to. I definitely meant to. And I do not feel any remorse for what I did to Stoney. Because she had no remorse for what she did to my son. And it's not only raped him, she gang raped him with Steven. Matthew, we all sitting on the floor and he was telling me, this is how I found out about both of them doing it together. But it was too late. Steven was gone. But Matthew told me that Stoney would actually make him sit there. Why? In his words, him and Stoney, her and Stoney did the nasty stuff and then they did it to him. And so now this was that's your way of inflicting punishment? Definitely. Okay. Okay. Where did that happen? Nico Allen Jenkins was born September 16, 1986 in Denver, Colorado to parents David McGee and Lori Jenkins. His father wasn't a big part of his life and his mother, well, we'll get to her later. Nico Jenkins was pretty much always a troubled kid. In 1993, at just the young age of 7, Nico brought a 25 caliber handgun to Highland Elementary School. It took them 4 years to accuse Jenkins of the crime, but by the age of 11, 
he had already been accused of stealing three times. This was pretty much the last time Jenkins was ever free for a significant amount of time. In 1998, he was sent to a group home but was quickly sent to youth detention center for hitting a minor with a clothes hanger and leaving wit marks on the child. When Sneeko was released from the detention center, he went to go live with his mother, but he was quickly sent right back for assaulting a kid with a knife. I mean, Nico had caused so much trouble, his probation was revoked in August 2001, and he was sent to Youth Rehabilitation and Treatment Center. And one year later, he was sent to Omaha and soon began threatening those around him. His own father, David McGee, wrote in court documents, Nico has threatened my life and pulled a sawed-off shotgun on me at my own home. Soon after, Nico stole two cars at gunpoint. In one incident, he asked a 20-year-old woman for a ride, and when she refused, Nico jumped in her car with a shotgun and drove to 22nd Street and Grand Avenue. There he ordered her to get out. In 2003, Nico was sent back to prison for the robberies and wasn't released for a decade. And the violence didn't end in prison. He was always in and out of the hole, once for assaulting a guard on Four Law at his grandmother's funeral. Another was for starting a prison riot. He was disciplined on several occasions for his tattoos, attacks on other inmates, making weapons out of toothbrushes. Once Nico had finally got out a decade later, he reconnected with his family and a bunch of female admirers. I mean, this guy was getting letters left and right from women calling themselves his wife. Crazy, right? I mean, I guess some women want to know where their man's at at all times. Nico had also connected with a man he met in prison named Curtis Bradford. Bradford's family would always tell them to stay away from Nico, but he wouldn't listen. Something, well, he later regret. Just 11 days after he was released from prison for carjacking, Nico's killing spree began, and the first of his victims were Juan Pena and George Roos. On August 11th, just 8 days later, Nico had killed once again, and this time it was his friend he met in prison, Curtis Bradford. Bradford had just posted a picture of them just hours before Nico shot him in the head. It was later revealed that Nico killed Bradford because his sister was convinced that he was responsible for shooting their house up. And just two days later, Nico pulled over a lady by the name of Andrea Kruger and shot her four times before stealing her car. On August 30th, Jenkins was finally arrested, but not for the murders. He was arrested for making terroristic threats. But by then, they had so much evidence against him. Realize I got Nico Jenkins? Do you not realize that? I got Nico Jenkins. I got you. What do you mean you got me? I got your DNA at the murder scene. I got your DNA in the car. Sir. I got the weapon. I got Nico Jenkins. I don't need to make I don't care about it. I just want other people are involved in it. What the hell happened out there? And why? All right, you know, I know who. I know what. I know when. I know where. And then when I talked to you earlier, you are saying stuff about a carjacking. Once Nico was arrested, it was later revealed that his family played a huge part in all four of the murders. Nico's sister, Erica Jenkins, and cousin, Christine Bordos, acted as prostitutes to lure Juan Pena and George Roos in. At first it was supposed to be just a robbery, but Nico had other plans. And fast forward 10 days later, Erica Jenkins, Christine Bortles, and now Nico's uncle, Warren Levering, went looking for a car to steal and found Andrea Kruger on her way home from work. Both Nico and Warren hopped out of the car and ordered Kruger to get out. And once she did, Nico shot her four times before stealing her car. I mean, his own mother, Lori Jenkins, played a huge role in purchasing Nico's ammunition used to kill three of the four victims. Even after Nico had killed Juan Pena and George Roos, all Nico's mother had to say was, did you at least get money? I mean, just look at their family tree. It's nothing but felons. Once Nico was in jail, he got a hold of a blade and started slicing 666 on his face. I mean, he even sliced the middle of his tongue to make it look like a snake, smearing blood all over the cell wall. He even went as far as slicing his penis to make it look like an ancient Egyptian serpent god. Nico ended up needing 27 stitches. He had claimed he worshipped Yeti and said it told him to murder the four people. They ended up having to put socks under his cell door from stopping items from passing underneath. He was no longer allowed to shave from keeping him from cutting himself. During his murder trial in Douglas County, Jenkins was assessed by a doctor who concluded Nico was a psychopath, one of the most dangerous people he's ever encountered. 
On August 19, 2004, Minko filed a lawsuit against the state of Nebraska for $24.5 million for wrongfully releasing him from prison, stating his claims of hearing voices from a pulpit were repeatedly ignored. I mean, this guy was crazy. He even blamed the correction officers for his four murders. Jenkins' uncle, Warren Levering, pleaded no contest in the role of killing Andrew Kruger. He ended up getting sentenced to 40 years in prison. Nico's cousin, Christine Bordos, ended up only getting 20, but because she played a huge role in convicting Jenkins and several of his family members. Maloney Jenkins and Lori Sells, sister of Nico and Erica Jenkins, also testified against them. Maloney's reasons stating that Erica had gotten her in so much trouble in the past, she was convicted of a felony robbery in 2005, and in 2003, she was responsible for a carjacking. And in that 2003 carjacking, her, Erica, and one of her cousins assaulted a woman with a stun gun before stealing her car, saying that she was done covering up information for Erica and Nico, and that Erica had been thrilled about the murders. Also noting that Erica stated that it was her first murder. She even expressed frustration of Nico shooting Curtis Bradford right after she did, saying that it was like claiming her first murder. Erica ended up getting life in prison, plus another 80 years on weapon charges for allegedly beating an inmate at the Nebraska Center for Women. And that other inmate just happens to be her cousin, Christine Bordos. I mean, she beat her with a padlock. She gave her a concussion, broken nose, broken finger, broken arm. I mean, it's crazy. She had just testified against her. You'd think they'll keep them away from each other. Nico's mother, Lori Jenkins, ended up getting 10 years for providing ammunition. But later, the court added another five years to her sentence. She won't be eligible for release until 2028 and by then she'll be 61. As for Nico, well he pleaded not guilty, and then changed his mind and pleaded guilty, and then changed his mind again and said he was ineligible for trial on grounds of insanity. But the judge quickly dismissed his appeals, and he was sentenced to life in prison. But in May 2017, Jenkins was sentenced to death by a three-judge panel. Alright guys, if you like the video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. And if you like the content, go ahead and subscribe. If you have anybody else you'd like me to do next, go ahead and comment down below.